I'm recording on uh, Zoom and on the uh, screen uh, recorder, which is called OBS. OBS. And uh, OBS just gives a better quality of sound. Okay. Um, how do I mute? Um, if I mute Ian and I cannot mute, can you mute your Ian? Can you mute your phone? Because if I mute you, you wouldn't be able to unmute yourself. Sure, I'm right. I'll mute myself now. Yeah. All right. Hello. Today is July twentieth, two thousand seventeen, and I start my usual Thursday webinar where I speak for myself. And I have with me Eva, hello, Michelle, hello, and Jan, hello. Hmm. Today I wanted to start with um, just brief introductions. We have new people joining every day our Facebook group and new people watching us on YouTube, so we'll have to reintroduce ourselves all the time. Okay, I'm Max Rempel, and uh, I'm a co-founder of Human Colony Community, which we abbreviated for Hucola. It's a nice um, tag word, which allows you, hashtag, it's called hashtag, a nice hashtag, which allows you to identify yourself on the, hey, Karen. Uh, identify yourself on uh, on the web. So Hukula is a unique word. When you search for Hukula, you find us. Human colony abbreviated. All right. I uh, wrote a book. My first book was written around 2009, 10, 11. The first concept, the first presentation was 2009, and then I published in 2011 about the aliens. And no, 2012 actually, before before that special date on December. And then mm -hmm. the aliens started speaking to me in response to my book. And that happened in May 2013, plus minus a couple of weeks. I met Jim Jim Charles just briefly. Uh, I was going to Gary Schneider's uh, Reiki found Reiki. Reiki share group, Reiki share, and there lots of people were coming together to share the healing, and there I learned my healing art of Reiki initially, and I was brought there of course by pains, and uh, Reiki helped, and also it was just a wonderful place where you can uh, meet like-minded people and chat. So I met Jim, and Jim, from the first impression, he looked like a very simplistic person. And he dressed up like a very simplistic person, like um, a typical manual laborer. Maybe, maybe lower class of uh, office worker, but still he looked like a manual laborer with a shortcut haircut. And he was so extremely positive that I was suspicious. You know, if somebody is that positive, that forward going, speaking about himself openly, then, that, you know, in normal circumstances, it makes you suspicious. But I still liked him because uh, uh, he was likable. So that was very short experience before he started channeling with me. And then uh, his Reiki style was all, also a little bit too overconfident. He was like, pretended he knew that he was, I thought he was pretending that he knew what he was doing. But... He was very confident in doing things and speaking about things. But I just let it slide, whatever. He was nice and uh, the energy was nice. And uh, when he did Reiki on me very soon, maybe it was our second or third meeting together, um, he said, you know, there are aliens around you. And I said, sure, I do. But not because I knew it first experience. I knew it because others told me before many times. And I'm fascinated by the aliens. And since 2009, I was like really into aliens. And um, um, when he said, I, I was sure, yeah, of course. 
And then he said, you know, they want to talk to you. I said, go ahead. And he says, are you sure? Uh, more, maybe he didn't say in exactly that word, but that was the kind of exchange. And then he started speaking for the aliens. And uh, he introduced him as Dizyaka Bodhisduda. And uh, I, of course, I asked him to repeat his name. And it took me like several sessions to finally write it down, remember. And I think in the first conversation, I said, can you shorten it for us? It's a little too long. And he said, this do. I said, what? And he said, um, in French, it's, uh, I think, 10, 12 or something like that. This, like, maybe 10 and do maybe 12. I don't know French anyway. But uh, finally, we remembered his name. Uh, so he's a Yale, and as soon as we established initial contact, I said, I'm applying for a visit to your ship because I I liked tall greys and uh, I wanted to visit them and to start being uh, relevant in that sort of interaction. And after that, we met maybe three times a week. I have all these recordings, maybe for starting from the second conversation, I already had my phone on recording every time. So it's all recorded. I have all the, all the files of the recordings. Some of them still need transcribing. They're, these are very... Initial conversations are essential in many ways. So I'm inviting transcribers to transcribe those files. And uh, soon Tepe came in. Now he said, I have in the ship, I have Takur, but she is silent. She doesn't want to speak. Can you imagine Takur not speaking, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but the, the essence, the reason why she's... She was silent. She was new there. She didn't, wasn't sure she knows what, what she's speaking about. So it took her maybe another month before she started to speak. And gradually she started to speak more and more. But for Lyrans, it is essential to have your emotions in place, have your integration in place. When you're in a new situation, you have to be in your balance before you actually do something. So for her, it was a delay to get in balance. And she was deciding whether she wants to stay on Earth Project or move on. All right, so Tepe started speaking. Tepe is um, a biochemical, biomedical, personal person in um, from Pleiades, from, I think, Aaron Pleiades, Pleiadian, but I'm not sure. Certainly a ple typ typical Pleiadian culture. And Tepe was very upset about our politicians. He said, you Earth humans, I don't understand you. It's complete nonsense. And he was hysterical, like hysterical <laughs> in terms of uh, completely upset about the political situation. He was... Um, and when I started speaking to him, I understood that he can't even start to comprehend where we are, what, why, we, why the Earth is in such condition as it is. He rejected it altogether. It was, he was helping, but at the same time, he, he wouldn't even think about reading our books, watching our movies, or walking on Earth. It was just too dark for him. And at that point, I realized the people who are helping us are not actually qualified to help us. And I started writing them letters. I said, if I create a mailbox on Gmail for you, can you check the mails, uh, the Gmail, the, the messages? They said, yes. And uh, I said, how about I start writing to you? And I wrote pretty long messages. And as the messages accumulated, it became a book. I think I realized that it is a book only later. First, it was just a series of passionate messages explaining how we are and why do they need to take my family up? And how I will help them with the Earth Project. And because my family needed a, um, a human environment, I asked how about we take up Jim and other uh, light workers, and we will be working up there helping on the Earth Project. So that's how the idea of human colony was born, and I was very happy that in September they approved it. Arcturian Council approved it. Arcturian Council of Gurkhutnir. Yes. And uh, I asked the cure, do, would you like to invite uh, volunteers? And she said, sure. And uh, I asked her just to record the invitation, and um, 
that was the basis for me to go out and invite people in uh, September, end of September, beginning of October, to start the website Human Colony, and um, and that was the initial impulse. And until now, we don't have a good physical experience, physical confirmation that it is real. It still happens in some other dimension or some other reality. It bleeds, <clears throat> bleeds into our reality somewhat. Some people experience something, but uh, I wish we had like a solid physical proof. That would be great. Um, I wish I remembered more. I remembered only glimpses in meditations where I can kind of perceive something and it would be then confirmed by someone else. So it's, um, we have here and there, we have a few confirmations that it is more or less real in some other reality which bleeds into our reality. But it didn't, it didn't manifest fully here yet. It's still a, an opportunity, a thing which wishes to be manifested but not fully manifested in this, in this reality. All right, so the human colony grew. Now it is uh, a community which looks like a, something in between the pub, the bar, and the beach. Like some people know each other, but there is also lots of people which, which don't, we don't know who they are. Like the Facebook group called Hugh Color Private is about 1,100 members, and of which I know maybe in about 10, 20%. So I don't know who these people are. They seem to be quiet. So it's not fully thousands of people. It's more like more like maybe 100 people who know each other, maybe another 100 of occasional visitors, and everybody else is uh, passive. And the same thing in uh, maybe we have a mailing list of 800 people, I, I, of which about 80 people open their emails and others just ignore them. So so we are still in tens and maybe a couple hundred. Our YouTube videos, uh, we have almost 3,000 3, subscribers on YouTube. And my videos count usually 300 views and Jim's videos count about 1,000. And occasionally when our videos is referenced by someone popular, like Indian in the Machine, they get to 10,000 views. Um, so that's the scale how big we are. We really a tiny and it's uh, I make a special point of make of keeping it homemade. The reason of that is that I so mistrust anything official and people so mistrust anything commercial and official that I try to keep it as homemade as possible and as sincere as possible. <clears throat> yeah. That's my yeah. It has to be sincere. So no nonsense is the <laughs> no nonsense is uh, is uh, the main um, desire here intention to make no nonsense to to get to the spiritual truth to ultimate truth of the situation. I think I'm done with the introduction of human colony. So to find us, go to hukola.org or to hukola. Or private on Facebook or humancolony.org. It's all the same, the same, uh, they all reference each other. <clears throat> Any comments, questions so far? Max, this is Ian. Can you hear me? Yes, good. Thank you. Um, one quick, quick comment I just wanted to make was that what attracted me to the human colony group, in, in effect, and from any of the others because there's a wide variety of groups out there it is because specifically this was kind of like a, a small group that had interaction with members it wasn't thousands of people with just ideas going all over the place with no agenda so i appreciate the group for the fact that it is a small group and you know it's intimate and people know each other so that that was just my comment Yes, thank you for prompts. Yes, I forgot to mention that our main activity is like that. Anybody can enter in real time. So we do some of the events live. And only reason I don't do the main reason I don't do this live is because 
the sound quality is better. My voice, people have trouble understanding my English, even Russian too, uh, but English especially. And um, to have better quality of the sound, I recorded in a special way, and then, and then uh, with a good microphone on locally, and then uploaded. It's it's just a better quality of sound. All right, so many of our webinars are open to the public. People can come and um, speak up. We do have agenda, of course. Uh, I love Yael, Pleiadians, and um, I think they are this, the, the hope of the humanity. If when, when outer humans, Pleiadians, Yael, Lyrans, Arcturians, join, join the efforts, that will be possible to to get out of the crisis where we are. I think we will be moving through the shift and we need that help, we need that understanding. So that's the agenda. And so Ascension is uh, a big topic. I still don't quite understand what the Ascension is, but uh, you know, let's call it the shift. We need to shift from the past to, to the future, right? From the past to the future. Um, in Russian, literature, sci-fi literature, there was uh, there are wonderful, amazing, wonderful uh, brother writers who wrote together books, Strugatsky. Um, Strugatsky, so they, one of their fa famous in Russia um, novel had uh, the core element, like the people who come from advanced civilizations to troubled civilizations and help them to progress were called progressors. So progressors are basically star seeds or agents of advanced civilizations to come who come in troubled civilizations and help them help with their progress, progressors. So the agenda here is a progressor agenda. And obviously, the progressors had huge crisis, moral crisis. Uh, essentially, it's the problem with um, prime directive. Prime directive. Uh, you know, how much can you intervene in in the affairs of the backward planet civilization, right? And do you want a revolution or do you want a peaceful shift? And what do you do in the case of reaction as we have now everywhere, right? We have clearly reaction. There was shift forward and now we're shifting backward. And uh, this shifting backward causes the division and, you know, what do progressors do in this case? They speak on YouTube. That's best we can do. All right. Um, speaking about what to do. Uh, to speak to the aliens and to speak to the outer humans. Um, Corey Good say, and David Wilcox say there are millions of outer humans. And it really depends how you count. If you count as a unified like civilization, unified cluster of people, then I don't think there are any bigger than maybe hundreds of people. Maybe there are factories or clusters of people who work together in hundreds. If you count humans who left the Earth and absorb, were absorbed in outer civilizations like Pleiadian, uh, Andromedan, Yael Pleiadian, solar system settlements, then there are thousands. And if you count wider, like related to humans, humans, then of course there are millions, but they are not involved in Earth projects. So the ones which are involved with Earth from outside, I think reliably it's thousands, at best tens of thousands. So these humans, I believe they have uh, a plan. And I wish to know what the plan is, but apparently they keep it secret from me, so I wouldn't spill it on YouTube. But they, um, the good ones have a good plan, and bad ones have a bad plan, but they all have plans. And there are 
uh, Girk Fitnier uh, as an association, an alliance of um, Yael Pleiadians, Lyrans, Arcturians, um, friendly reptilians, Lashunda, and Fendorians. And these, uh, these are very limited by what they can do because they negotiate with Earth governments, which is great that they negotiate, and it is not great that they are very limited with what they can do. And there are other alliances which are more free when they don't, when they are not bound by negotiation, so they can do more. Uh, so we collect that information, and um, we are lucky to speak to some of them. And uh, it's it's big diplomacy and big bureaucracy, and there are. Um, outsiders, how do you call them, renegades, which can uh, speak more but do less and so on. <clears throat> but basically we are, we seem to be now in good hands and uh, it's all one big game. I'm, I, I'm a believer. It's for me, it's pretty, pretty real that reality is an illusion. So I take it as a big computer game in which different factions have their own agenda and they program their own reality. And uh, you are just dreaming in this illusion. And this illusion is in some sort of a crisis. And it is for you and us to take on a charge of solving this crisis through our spiritual work and practical down-to-earth ground, ground team on the ground work. So until the shift really starts shifting right now it's still in the crisis it's it's a um, quiet time before the shift when it starts shifting fast that would be the most interesting time and uh, until now i was pretty pessimistic about how it is going to be i i, I lived through a russian uh, shift <clears throat> of 90s early 90s <clears throat> and it was uh Positive in many ways. It went through peacefully. There was no civil war. Uh, the largest disaster was uh, Chernobyl, which was 1986 um, meltdown of the nuclear power station. And um, it resulted in, uh, in a big shift in, um, in the consciousness of 260 million people. I think that was the number involved more or less. <clears throat> and it changed the balance of power on Earth, obviously. So li living through that, I was, I'm pretty pessimistic. Like when I see how th things fall apart, how production falls apart, um, my prediction was that similar th a similar thing might happen to the global economy. Uh, the shift would cause the poverty and uh, uh, material hardships and so on. And I think these predictions were also in line with predictions of, of the aliens and this, the high-level spirits. But recently I just got some feeling, intuitive feeling, that possibly we will be able to shift in a more civilized fashion where the shift would still um, allow for manufacturing economy and housekeeping to keep going so the disasters might be really minimal it is possible some miracles of that kind happened in civilized countries like when russia fell apart moscow was the first one to disintegrate then the wave expanded like I think you saw the images of uh, nuclear blast when there is a first a mushroom and then expansion of the of the circle of de destruction. So that was in Russia. That expansion is still going. Some parts of Russia are so far from Moscow they still didn't weren't fully impacted by the um, destruction of 1990. So now it's like. 27 years later, right? 27 years later, there are still pockets of old life which didn't notice, the revolution didn't notice the shift in 90s. There was a 
favorite jokes joke which many Russians like. Um, so there is a yeah, it's it's mind shifting for you. Uh, imagine an exam, his, history lesson exam in university, history class exam. So the examiners obviously are part, communist party members and they brainwashed to to no to high extent. And um, they ask a student um, to tell about the Russian communist revolution. And the student asks, which revolution? And they say, you know, you know, Lenin, Stalin, you know, that kind of revolution. He said, I don't know. And they ask him, where from are you? And he names some obscure town, which is called Urupinsk. And one of the examiners tells to the other, um, let's leave everything and go to this Urupinsk. Um, are you muted? Do you, do you understand, do you understand the humor? Um, yes. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it's uh, I muted you. So all right. Um, so basically, there are still Urupinsk type of locations in in Soviet Union where which one didn't notice the revolution and the shift. And when the big shift and the earth happens, we I'm sure there will be some locations which are so ancient and so separated from the civilization that wouldn't notice. Um, but it is a different state, a different people. The English speaking people who is uh, ruling the economy now in large extent and huge extent, they're different from Russians. And um, they're less corrupt. That's a big statement, but on average, okay. English speaking people are less corrupt and much more capable of um, kindness and cooperation. So there is an opportunity for the shift to happen, economic shift um, to happen without much damage. How it will start, we don't know yet, but the predictions are listed in the book, my favorite book, um, A Day After Disclosure, A Day After Disclosure by Richard Dolan. But basically, when the things start shifting, secrets, some secrets will come out, and hopefully they will come out in a way that the humanity will notice them. And the main secret is that the aliens are around here down on the surface and out there in the space. And they, their technologies are powerful, and um, our military has no no capacity of fighting them. So we are not um, if we are if we live here undisturbed, it's only because the aliens are peaceful. So that's the main conclusions. If they have the weapons and they didn't take over the planet, then uh, our fights for taking over the planet have very little sense. So that's the main conclusion. So uh, I don't know how long will it take for humanity to swallow it and to understand. But um, once when it happens, maybe it will take a hundred years. I don't know. Hopefully sooner. Hopefully five years. When it happens. There is an observation that the countries that don't invest in their military, but otherwise are peaceful, uh, have the economy just boosted really fast. And these are included, included in Russia, there were countries of uh, Baltic, Baltic countries uh, like Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, which were conquered by Soviet Union only in 1945 and were liberated from the Soviet Union around 1990. So they were under Russian oppression only for 45 years. And they didn't have their own military because Russia provided their army. So they had a good opportunity to uh, keep and expand the economy and culture even under Russian oppression. So when, when the Soviet Union fell apart, these were 
the ones which flourished first. And the shift was peaceful, and um, the economy goes up just because there is no nonsense there, no military ambitions. Small countries on the side of the big empire, which is more or less peaceful right now. Um, another example is the Germany, when Germans were we lost in the Second World War. They allowed to economic, econ, economically rebuild the economy without build, investing in the army. So that allowed them to boost the economy really fast. When they build the economy without spending a lot of money on the army. Same with Japan. It lost and then it recovered really well. You can see it now. Japan is doing really well and uh, South Korea too. So when the earth drops the military ambitions, I think uh, the economy can be really boosted. It's kind of obvious, but uh, there is so, many, so much confusion around that topic that uh, it's really hard to, <laughs> to deliver that simple thought <laughs> to earth, uh, to earth um, comrades. Um, so disclosure, will happen someday, then uh, hopefully the open contact will start happening, official open contact. And um, that's where light workers would be in disclosure and in the contact light workers would be, that's where we take over the earth. Okay. And um, I'm not sure we are good in the management and politics. So our way of conquering the earth would be different, I, I believe. Um, and I don't know what what format it will take. Mostly, I, I assume that I will be still sitting here and speaking on YouTube. Um, but um, some other activities are like consulting. Really, some people are very good at management and organizing. But um, they would need the information how the aliens are. And we are the humans who understand aliens much better than anyone. <clears throat> Hopefully there will be humans that come from outer space and they have even better understanding of the aliens. So I assume we'll be working together with outer humans to um, implement their plan and correct their plan and merge. Basically, we are intermediaries. So we'll merge their plan, consumed, not consumed, um, designed out, out there, conceptualized out there with the realities of the earth. So we understand how the earth is. So we will naturally shift in that position because we have the understanding of the life down here and also understanding the life up, up there. And for us, it's kind of natural, while for the majority of the planet, it would be just, it will take time to, to incorporate. So that would be the period, short period, maybe a few years, maybe like 20 years, when the light workers would be in charge of the transition. Now, I, uh, how do I see it? I still think that YouTube and television would be the best uh, media for educating the masses. So I think that would be the main activity. Really, the masses have to do the action and we'll just provide the understanding and uh, the normal voice. Um, so yeah, start a YouTube channel practice. You'll we'll, we'll have a lot of attention when the things start happening because everybody else would be confused. They wouldn't know what to say. And uh, people would look for answers and will come to us to, to get the answers. <laughs> and uh, I mentioned before, there was, uh, in Soviet Union, there was um, a period when good things were happening. Soviet Union fell apart in ar around 1990, and I need to look at the timeline, but Around 1990, it fell apart. 91, maybe it was an official date of falling apart. And then uh, the new structures were formed, so new elections happened, new appointments happened. 
and it just happened that no nonsense approach was used. So when they were choosing the the minister for culture, they really actually looked at um, people related to culture for a change. And one of our favorite um, artists was uh, appointed as a minister of culture, and um, she is really great. She's still here. And, you know, she was there maybe only for a couple of years. I don't know exactly, maybe three years. I need to Google that. But uh, just the fact that <laughs> common sense was in uh, on the top of the country was uh, was um, exceptional. It's, it's, it's very rare. And another example was um, uh, when Kennedy, John F. Kennedy, um, formed uh, his policies um, for a change he want, he asked the scientists like real top scientists to, to contribute to the science policies so my favorite Jim Watson who discovered double helix was invited to Washington to provide his advice how the science should be directed uh, it didn't last long I think he spent there maybe weeks only but but the fact that you actually can ask scientists how to run science is exceptional so that kind of common sense is um, is um, sometimes uh, has a chance to penetrate the government um, during the shifts. And I don't think it will be one shift, it will be a series of, as usually in history, it is a series of shifts. And it like goes up and down, up and down, forward, backward. But but that would be an opportunity for common sense actually to, to be expressed. Um, economy wise I just recently when I wrote my memories I remember there was a period when the economy just completely fell apart there was no the stores were closed and people just st stepped out on the streets and started trading on the streets and it's amazing how economy picked up without the repression of the government it picked up in days and um, you, you could buy everything you could exchange everything and people started producing things really fast, like farmers were coming, selling things, um, homemade manufacturing started, people baked bread, and uh, the economy actually flourished at that time. I, I remember now that it wasn't that bad at all. It was a time when the repression was not the present, and until it started again, the economy flourished. So, so it's... It, it, the economy is bad not because of people not able to produce. Like unemployed, they would be happy to do something if they were permitted to work. It is because um, the criminals prevent uh, the manufacturers to do stuff. And uh, now the criminal, who, who is the main criminal, just it just centralized. So we have a centralized criminal system. And when the criminals step away, there will be ex expansion of economy. If the new criminals are not taken over the charge, right? If there is no criminals, if somehow the criminals kind of step away, then uh, economy can can actually work. Like economy meaning the, the manufacturing and supplies and exchange and that sort of thing. All right. Um, now, how long the transition would take hundreds of years, right? But the key key time is the beginning of transition, which takes weeks and months. So weeks and months of the beginning of transition are the essential. Uh, where the aliens would participate and how? I see them, I advise them to settle in, obviously they will be settled in military bases because the military can provide the safety for them. But there the military culture is sort of so much directed into weapons and war that I don't think the military are qualified to speak about every, anything else other than technology, military technology and stuff. So I think the aliens would be very restricted what they can give to military. The second places I think would be great would be, would be university towns, universities and hospitals. That's where the aliens could mingle with humans and teach us the technology, culture, and learn the technology and culture, no, learn the culture, not technology, 
and learn how to deal with humans. And um, these big places, they uh, provide safety for them. Yes, good point. Well, I, I'm, I'm open to questions. Yes. Michelle, you wanted to speak. Yes. Um, I, I live near um, one of the major universities here in the United States. And with what you're just describing now about with aliens working at universities and all, will this be great practice? You know, I know it'll be great practice, but how do I say, by the way, um, how can I better work with you? even though you're an alien species. I mean, how can I better, how can I let these beings know that I want to work with them, even though with what you're saying that they're going to come to alien if they're going to work at the universities to better intermingle with humans. I don't know if I'm making sense at all. I, I get it. I get it. So here's the university building, right? How do you enter it if there is security there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And here is, uh, I don't even know where the aliens are, possibly it would be a secret location within the university where like some labs, some professors would um, have a property on them and protect them, would put some, uh, some police around, the security guards around the alien lab. Well, the better way I how I could describe it is if they know you're part of this colony under Hukolo or whatever, and let's say they know you, let's say they know you through the astral plane or whatever, yes. but yet, the, can is it possible that they're playing the, you know, the down low about like, okay, I know you because you visit us through your sleep or whatever, but we got to pretend that we don't know each other. Is it possible that they're doing that as well? Um, your question is so wide, I don't know where to start and what to think about. Um, Max, this is Ian. Yes, go if ahead. You, if you would allow me just make you make my observation on that would be, I, I would think that there, that they would have knowledge that you were, let's say, one of the light workers or one of the humans on Earth who are acceptable to this transitioning that's happening and i would think that your services would 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 desperately be needed as far as a facilitator let's say on campus as much like a teacher as far as facility as far as educating uh uh translating you know communicating what's happening at that at the alien level and down to the masses it's you know very much like a professor would but an education into new culture here's what's happening here's what's working and we need people to facilitate this you know translate it in a way you know that's culturally acceptable and that that would just be my take on it yeah okay. I, i'm looking for examples how how it was done in the past like einstein was uh, that kind of person he uh, discovered his main discoveries uh, b before the age of 30. He was married to a very talented uh, mathematician and together they formed a joint mind with his wife and he was able to discover all his um, relativity theory and other theories uh, in young age. And then she kind of went nuts and he got Nobel Prize, gave it to her and the prize was stolen, I think. Uh, the, th the history is that uh, it was burned, but I think it was um, it was stolen and then burned. The house was burned to to remove the traces. But uh, then he married a woman who was not talented mathematician, but with that woman he did miracles in po in po politics. He was one of the most desired uh, ac activists in politics, and um, he did amaz amazing work in that. Amazing work for the rest of his life, which was long. So he was active writing letters. At that time, there was no YouTube. I, I believe it was YouTube. He would be speaking on YouTube. But um, uh, he, he, on television, I don't know if he spoke on television, but he was writing letters and uh, articles. And uh, he had a continuous flow of visitors. And he was one of the key persons for the Manhattan Project to start. 
uh, and then he was pushed away right away from the Manhattan Project because uh, he had a lover, a communist lover. So, so, uh, <clears throat> uh, but he was very talented in that, and he did it with amazing grace, amazing grace. Another kind of person like that was um, Mahatma Gandhi, who also he 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 lived in his ashram and he had. A continuous flow of visitors, continuous, continuous series of letters, and uh, he affected the global awakening and pro progression in, in a great sense. So, so you know, uh, Allen Ginsberg, another, another uh, he traveled a lot, but he he communicated with the key thinkers of the time and was demanded when things were needed. Uh, one of the key events in Ginsburg career was uh, during the Chicago uh, uprising, there was a, <clears throat> a planned police uh, crashdown on, on, uh, on uh, demonstrators, peaceful demonstrators. And when, when that happened, no, no, not that, before that happened, he prevented that just by chanting Indian uh, Kirtan. So the whole crowd was mesmerized by his voice, and one night he was able to keep it peaceful. So next night he tried it, but he wasn't able to stop the fight. So ne next day it was uh, it went really bad. But one 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 day he was able to save the day just by chanting kirtan. So so you know there are great great historical figures who did that, mm. and there, are, there were a lot of others who played alone, played together. I don't think there is uh, anything special other than networking. You just network um, well, uh, meet people, connect to people, and uh, uh, it takes some special kind of mind, mindset, and it takes some mind culture to think big. So that's why I recommend that book, uh, The Day After Disclosure, because it asks exactly the right questions. What will happen and what is needed to be done when the, when the shift starts? And um, just look at the history. There is so much great history about previous shifts, like Russian Revolution, French Revolution, um, Watergate. Uh, there is a great book, uh, 1968. Highly recommend audio book and uh, um, paper book. 1968. There was... Uh, the major shift happened in 1968. The major shift in the, in the humanity. And uh, the author no, recognizes the shift was there, but uh, didn't theorize why did it happen. But obviously it was a dimensional shift. So, um, how do you participate? You network. And it takes some courage, which is actually the understanding of the situation, how to swim in uh, muddy waters. Yeah, that's that's what it is. How to swim in muddy waters. <laughs> yeah. Like bubbles and uh, junk just swim nicely in muddy waters, right? But how do you find the right people, like John Lennon? Uh, when uh, he, he quit Beatles. He was the key person who decided to to quit that nonsense, right? Why did he, did he do that? Because the crisis was already there. He just realized they can't they cannot be on the top for a long, much longer. So they they would fall apart one way or another. So he, he made this decision in in part because he understood that. You know, they were on top of charts for too long. It was like from 64 to about plus minus 69, I think. And then um, they quit. And uh, for him, it was also that the search for yourself. Um, when you are a star and uh, you have to make sure the group is on top, you do things which you wouldn't do if you wanted to develop yourself spiritually. So for him, his family life was a disaster. His uh, culture life was a disaster. He couldn't step out of his car, airplane, or apartment without lots of police. 
So he wanted to be with people and be involved with people. And um, the people he was involved were not relevant to his interests. Uh, he, the filtering system who was admitted to John Lennon didn't allow him to hang around with people he wanted to. And he wanted to hang around with um, Bob Dylan, right? And Allen Ginsberg and, uh, and other thinkers of the time. So, uh, he settled in New York City where it was the only place where he could walk on the streets, people would recognize him, but not, what's it word, not attack him, asking for his autographs and uh, treating him as, uh, as crazily as they treat other celebrities. So, he joined the uh, uh, progressors of the time, political, uh, Rubin, I forgot the first name. The Rubin, the the p, p, um, I, how do you say Oppo, opposition uh, activists, activists, and and um, that was sort of another disaster. But um, he tried to be important in in that kind of area. But um, but then they, they killed him when when he became more successful in that, right? So. so Networking is essential, and um, he knew how to network. He had that <laughs> popularity which allowed him to network. But other people, uh, how Rubin calculated to approach John Lennon, right? Because there is um, that intuition and that guidance to come to the right person at the right time when they're ready. And... Um, and that, that had a huge impact on, on, on the development of things. So, yeah, just know who is important, like uh, Stephen Greer, David Wilcock, Kerry Cassidy, Bashar, Dari Lanka. Come together over me, right? How, how, how is it in the song? Come together. I really want to say something. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. You know, I was like thinking uh, about uh, Michelle's question and the truth is that um, aliens can read our minds and basically uh, they know if we, we want to have contact with them or not but now who you attract is depending what is your personal vibration because if you are basically heal, healed and you vibrate love then that's who is going to contact you and the opposite because you have here aliens which are you are already here and you have here aliens which are all kinds of beings right so that also comes to the thing what's ascension which you brought up what i have learned that really what ascension is 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 changing your vibration your energy high higher more loving and um like i studied a lot of june with june valo melchizedek i don't know if you know him with who june valo melchizedek melchizedek yes yeah so I have was, spiritual relation to them yes so he was basically saying that uh, ascension is basically moving your consciousness from the brain to the heart. So starting, per starting perceiving the world from the duality of the brain to uh, unity consciousness of the heart. Um, like, um, like Max, let's say, as I read your energy, at one on one hand you are so brainy, right? So logical, but you actually operate from the heart. So it's like like some people already shifted that direction because you are very giving, you are very loving by nature. Drunpa also said that humanity in some ways already shifted because there is this big consciousness grid which is actually physical grid around the planet of new humanity so he believed that this grid allows humanity to shift you know so that was very very interesting you know 
Oh, I wanted to also say something because you said you you said very strong statement, and I think in some ways you're right. But the Eastern, like Russia and also Poland, in some ways a lot there is a lot of kind of corruption, right? And here is on one hand is less, but then when you actually look who is running the country and not only the country, most of the planet. It yeah, yeah. The, here I, the corruption is just more concentrated. Yeah, it's yes, just not everybody is corrupted. That's what I'm yes, saying. This, just then uh, capitalism is not only corrupted, it's, it's a predatory system. So um, there are a lot of people who live here who are actually really good people. They are, uh, at the same time, they believe in a system that is based on using, including actually using death being, you know, other people. So I, I see it as a little tricky thing. Right, yeah, I, I cannot solve this. I don't think it is solvable from that point. Uh, I hope that aliens would um, somehow help us with that because I don't see that trouble of communist capitalism. It's nothing seems to be working. You know what's working? Uh, actually, I when I studied in Britain, there is this beautiful con and I kind of got into an answer to it, which is how can I help you? Yes. Well, basically, the, tra the uh, transition comes from within each individual. You know. Yeah, but that's my my take now. Yeah, you can imagine it yourself because it's all an illusion. It's up to us to uh, sh use the law of attraction to shift the reality into the positive. Yeah. Yes. Because otherwise, it's um, we can do we cannot do it from. Outside, yes. please, mm -hmm. like changing outside. We really have to create the inner change to allow mm -hmm. the outer change. Yeah, let's invite other comments. Yes, yes, that's enough of me. <laughs> um, yes. Hello. Yes. Hi. Hey. I'm not very tech savvy. Sorry, y'all. Who is speaking? This is Karen. Thanks, Karen. Hi, Max. Thank you for the, inviting me to your interesting conversation. I think we're joining. Absolutely. Have you guys heard about the Federal Reserve Bank and the Social Security card account numbers and that millions of people? Yeah, are... yeah, yeah. It's, okay. uh, it's an interesting story. Uh, David Wilcock and, um, and uh, others are talking about it. I, I hope it is. Um, obviously, it's true. Uh, mm -hmm. That uh, the whole system is, uh, you know, is a draconians, reptilians running the economy according to their Orion style, and it's uh, a system of, you know, they even when the European Union expands, they ex export their draconian system into new countries and uh, use it to enslave other countries through credit debt and so on. Yeah. Um, it seems to be working anyway. It, it is progressive compared to the past. Like, you know, the humanity needed to pass through that stage. Now, how does it evolve beyond that? I uh, I hope the aliens and outer humans have a solution because um, oh, right, right now I don't see the humans, in, in a human practice, I don't see countries which do that well. Like maybe Sweden, but it's... Um, it's 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 kind of requires so much. Um, it the Swedish model is not applicable to other countries. It requires uh, the country to be really civilized, and uh, uh, the energies should be shifted in many ways to to ac accept this kind of new social structure. Most of the countries are are not there yet, especially the the Asia is not. Swedish model doesn't work for Asia no. and for Russia either. No, it wouldn't. So um, I'm thinking about some sort of mixed model where you have communes, like you have in Israel, you have uh, kibbutzes, which are essentially communes where, with people sharing everything. But these communes are surrounded by uh, 
open market and uh, how do you say um, modern financial system. So they kind of the commune systems swim within financial systems. Now, when the financial system, big financial system, falls apart, maybe the commune system will flourish. But, but I don't think the bigger humanity, the billions of humans, are ready to to join the commune system. I think, uh, especially the cities, are completely not there yet. So, um, the electronic money, electronic sharing systems. Uh, like Uber, Uber is great. I think Uber is a, a new way of thinking which might somehow replace the financial system eventually. Not the whole, not Uber by itself, but Uber as a business model. Even yeah, even as a collaboration model. It's a collaboration. It's it's a business successful business model, but it's also a collaboration model where electronics decides who helps who. Yes. It's a it's an artificial intelligence and the positive the positive side of artificial intelligence. So now I don't have to stand on the corner ha rising hands uh, and waiting for someone to pick me up. The electronics guide someone to help me up, and now it expands to all kind of uh, co cooperation. Like now, Uber food, Uber Uber uh, home home cleaning, Uber uh, how do you call it um, the mm -hmm. Helping hands, uh, uh, the person who fixes things in house. There is a name for it. Handyman. Yeah. Handyman. But, yeah. Not only, not only that, but I think at the same time, Uber or that whole model using the the internet commerce, if you will, mm -hmm. opens up a whole new way of commerce because you have a lot of trading and bartering going on, and that would be a great facilitator for a currency to begin instead of having yeah. cold hard cash you know to be distributed or what have you mm -hmm. there's you know a monetary system can develop through the current internet pay payment systems such as how you pay uber and and and, and other provide and other you know providers yes just, just a thought yeah can you dump the whole whole money system and keep uber <laughs> I mean, we're all supposed to be helping each other, especially when this shift happens, you know, with a, a community garden or teaching people's kids or dogs or whatever it is you do, you contribute that to everyone and then other people contribute their specialties back to you. That sounds pretty good to me. So we have another... 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 to 20 minutes, what should we discuss? I have another topic, but it's sort of shifting away maybe a little bit. Go ahead. Do we have anything on that topic be before we shift? My question is a little shift as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if, if you would like to wait, that's fine because mine's a little bit yeah, of an off topic. Well, Happy to well, okay. Maybe um, maybe mine has maybe to, your my, topic is equal to mine, so that'll be nice. Okay. M mine has to do with the event that's coming up. Yes. And uh you know, in upstate New York here in just a couple of weeks, which I'm excited about and planning on attending. Oh, you're coming. And, hey. uh, yeah. And uh, <coughs> so I'm I got an email from someone who talked about balance due, and am I correct or not? I thought balance due was like when uh, was up on arrival, yes. or has that changed? Yes, uh, we need to. Okay, where do we start? So I organize. Let's start from far. Oh, the Earth needs to needs healing, and the Earth ne Earth needs uh, upgrade, and because it's all a global illusion, uh, wide illusion. I have a new person there. That's Ian. <laughs> oh, that's you. Okay. Yeah, that's me. Let me click on you. Yay. How do we do that? Okay. So, because it is an illusion and because it's all our collective dream, we as light workers can help that transition in a big way. We have the connection to. Um, creators, energies, and um, programs 
so we consciously can help the earth to to ascend to shift so for that we need to do it collective can need to do collective work so we need to physically come together what we do now is great but when we physically come together we can open portals uh, upgrade the right. vortexes invite the upgrades because right. our invitation by itself is needed collective invitation is needed for the upgrades so that right. was groups is like the, the power by groups is like the magnification by 10. <laughs> yeah some some number maybe it's groups uh, is much more powerful than individuals maybe much more than 10 yes so um so that's yeah. why the idea is of coming together and meditating together on earth upgrades and then gradually it involved evolved you know what what can we teach there what what kind of work should we do so uh, many people come are beginners so for the beginners the initial work which we can provide for for individuals is um, reiki healing energy healing initiation and teaching and practice hands-on practice you know we can do hands-on practice online but there we can actually do the healing uh, right. and we will do healing so i think when we come together first thing i will ask you know if anybody has pains or is uh, requires healing urgently we'll bring them together and we'll do urgent uh, energy healing right there for the few people before like while we're teaching so we'll i'm sure there will be more than two healers there so we'll have a uh, 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 ongoing okay. healing going on while people are um, being taught in the classes so there will be parallel okay, activity and then i need to be is, healed so i'm one of them yay <laughs> Okay, so we'll meet together. And channeling is another um, thing. We, we really need to communicate with the aliens and outer humans and the spirits. And uh, we'll help people with, initi with initiation into channeling and uh, troubleshooting channeling, explaining what, what mindset is needed there and how to avoid typical pitfalls of channeling, side effects of channeling. So these these are major activities, and telepathy is uh, is the answer for the humanity. Like that's what the aliens explain. We will shift whenever we learn telepathy. So we'll teach teach telepathy, channeling, energy healing, and we'll do group meditations for the Earth. Now. What was the question? You had the specific questions. Yeah, the payments. Uh, what, the uh, yeah, way, yeah, the, the payment payments. was whether or not. Yeah, we, we do it in a very economical way. So I put down payment there. It's like was a significant amount of money for me, but it will be returned when it already re has been returned through your initial down payments. But uh, when we arrive there, another sum is due to the camp. And if you pay it sooner, then you'll be able to, uh, to pay it right away. And otherwise, we'll have to borrow the money and then... Uh, the collect the money from the people so that's okay so personally you have to pay you have to pay in advance yeah. and so unless so well, waiting for everyone arrival, to show up pay, and pay then yeah you, yeah the so camp. by paying for so by asking for payment beforehand yeah. allows you to to do that yeah, to, to pay for everything to the camp only. right okay it's okay nice i was just wondering about that christian camp and, with um nice wood 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 houses and great food so uh, right. If anybody who is listening is interested, uh, there are a few, I think, six spaces available out of 35. And um, contact me or go to hucola.org, humancolony.org, and click on workshop. And there is a okay. registration. One of the, another thing I have, I'm going to be driving up there yes. from Atlanta. And so I, I, I noticed that there were lists of things to, to bring. Is there someone I should contact or should I just ask you, like what types of things should I bring or is there th are there specific things that you need? Great. Or should I contact the person who is yeah, coordinating all of that? We have a joint email for organizers. There is uh, five of us working on that. And I have a great help team. So write to all of us at once by writing to workshop at hucola.org, workshop at hucola.org. And if you forget the, the, that email, click on humancolony.org on workshop and down below there is contact information. Okay, I'm writing it down, so I got it, thank you. Uh-huh, yeah, we need a guitar, 
uh, and don't have uh, that. drums <laughs> and blankets and sheets because they don't provide okay. enough blankets. Right. And, uh, Betty and Betty and stuff I can definitely do. What are the size of beds for for sheets? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know. Uh, send it to workshop. We'll find it out. I think it's twin. I'm pretty right. sure it's twin, but but right. we need to double check. I was thinking they were probably twin, but I thought you know I I have a lot of full sets, but you know bigger is fine if the bed is smaller. <laughs> Yeah, it, is it twin or smaller? Hey, Max, I got a okay. question. Uh -huh. um, if you cannot afford to go to these workshops, is there any way that you would be hosting like a Skype version, like a Zoom version of it? We will so do two um, broadcasts. One is Saturday webinar and another is Sunday class. And um, I need to announce them, but basically, uh, it's, uh, I think, uh, let me see the date. It is uh, whatever, uh, Saturday, August 5th, uh, our Saturday webinar will be from the workshop. And the next day will be August 6th would be the class from the workshop. Okay, and because I might be able to for next year, but not this year. I see. Um, on, go ahead. I was going to just get on, on this. It's starting on the 5th of the, or the evening of the 4th. What? The, with the workshop. Oh, it's on the 3rd. August 3rd, we start and we do two okay. podcasts during the workshop. Okay. Since I'm driving up, um, would, would there be any availability uh, if I was to, you know, if I was to get there a day early or do yes, what yes. I need just you by just my own extra, accommodation? I think $25 for, for to, the, to the camp, yes. Okay. Great. Yeah, it's pretty flexible there. Um, you know, you can arrive, sleep, and then pay next day. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh-huh. Any more questions, topics? <laughs> All right, the last topic is uh, a, a spiritual one. Let me give you, get you into a spiritual vibration just a little. Not, not that you are not in a spiritual vibration, but in, um, I say, sh shifting your energy a little bit higher. <laughs> So the idea is of connection to the divine. <laughs> Take a deep breath. Allah. And breathe deeply and consciously. Pay attention to your breath. Now, intend to connect to the source. Through your heart cell, through the spirit vine, through the tree of life, to the, to the source. To the mother, father, daughter, son, God. All of you, you have the ability to meditate and connect to that source. Now the question is, when you come down to the physical life, can you carry it with you? Especially important it is for the situations of stress. Because at some situations during the day, you notice that you are losing your energy and you're losing health. And one of the key ways for you to stay healthy is to stay connected to the source. That's so simple. When you meditate and sleep, you connect to the source and bring in the healing energy. You wake up healed. Now, when you work during the day, you notice at some points you become so 
absorbed in negativity, so absorbed in the timing, in hurrying, into going fast, doing things in time, so absorbed in anger of others, in pain of others, that you lose your health. So the secret is, as much as possible, as frequent as possible, connect to the source again and keep that connection even when you come down to the physical life. You obviously will lose it during the day, but the more you practice keeping that connection, keeping that connection. So you wash the dishes and your hands are doing the dishwashing part, but your spiritual mind image is in a balanced praying, right? And the hands are in the praying position. And the hands are in healing position, like Indian gods who have many hands, you can use two of your physical hands do your physical work and other hands doing the praying and dancing and healing. How to stay in this connection to the source? Chanting a prayer, kirtan, chanting of divine prayers, chanting of om, om, Chanting of melodies connecting you to the to the source is really helping your mind to stay connected. Ramdas used to chant Ram, just Ram, 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 Ram. It's a great chant which connects you to the uh, to the divine source. So Om, Ram, or any other chant which for you symbolizes the connection. So you can speak at the same time your mind keeps chanting. Ram, 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 Ram. All right. So with that simple idea, I'll start wrapping up. Place your hands on your heart. We are thankful because we are in love. That experience of physical life is important for us because it is for our learning and for help of others. It's an honor to be here and be a part of this great shift, living in this time of transition. We need the divine energy, we need the divine healing, we invite it and we accept it. Say three times, I accept, I accept, I accept. Now place your hands in a relaxed way in acceptance position and receive the rain of healing from above. The energy flow, the vibration comes from above and it's up to you to accept it. Say, I accept. I accept, I accept. Urhan Ramaha Ramaha Ramahaya Um 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 Now place your hands 
palms down, put them down on the knees or on the bed or just direct them towards the earth. Connect to the earth energies and um, release the darkness. Release the darkness to the ground. Connect to the healing energy of earth. Um, there is a place for sadness. There is an honored place for sadness. It is a part of life, a part of release. Be sad when you have to, when you want to, when you need to. Sadness and release. To be something sad about is healthy. Be releasing the sadness, releasing the darkness. Recognize the darkness within yourself. Recognize the place for it and release an extra darkness which is not needed at the moment. Ooh. 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 And now connect to the angelic energy. Let's use that position. Raise your hands like that. Palms open. Allah, like angel opening the wings in the glory. Allah, yeah, nah, nah. Embody the angel. Embody the angel. Invite the angel, your favorite angel, to enter your body and uh, unite with you. Allah 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 You are connected to the glory. You are glory. Allah 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 and now coming back to the heart. Connect to the heart and find love within yourself. You don't need another person to be in love. Love is the state of being. Be in love. Be in love with the universe. In love with this illusion. You're here for the reason. Love it. Love the reason. Love the illusion. And share with it your energy. Share with it your compassion. Share with it your kindness. Be in love. Be instead of kindness, ecstasy. Kind ecstasy. Ecstatic kindness. With that, I end the meeting. Have a good day. You can stay in this state of love and ecstasy as long as you wish, as long as it's good for you. Goodbye. Thank you.